Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I want to talk about whether or not using iodine is safe for your thyroid. And we're going to be talking about some of the risks associated with using iodine, and we're going to be talking about how much you should be using, if you should be using it at all, um, and we're going to talk about how to actually get it, what type of source that um, I think is safe for you. So let's, let's jump in here. Um, in the beginning, well, let's just jump right into the potential risks. And the risks that I'm going to be citing, they're all from uh, literary studies. And just because there's, it's important to, when I talk about these risks is that you appreciate the difference between um, causality and just association. And so a lot of these things, we look at information and data and we see that as you take iodine, these things tend to happen more frequently, but it doesn't necessarily mean that iodine is causing those things. However, these are all things that you should consider before you use iodine, especially before you use high doses. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Number one is one of the potential risks of using iodine is thyroid cancer. And so there has there have been studies which have shown that um, when you take civilizations that don't have um, iodine and you give them iodine usually you know you iodize salt and things like that and you give them um, enough iodine so that it, they're actually urinating it out you can follow that those people and you see that there's an increase in thyroid cancer among those patients so the increase is about double almost triple what it was over about a 20 year period in some of these studies and so you can't look at that and say right away that iodine causing thyroid cancer I'm not saying that at all but it is interesting that those things tend to correlate one with another or that they tend to go up over around the same period of time. Another thing to consider though is around the same time thyroid cancer could have been caused from other things you know so it's possible that that could be the case um, and it's also possible that we're just better at detecting it. So this could all be attributed to it but when you talk about almost a three time risk over a 20 year period you know you probably wouldn't expect that just from more sensitive imaging or um, things like that you know you, you would expect it to go up slightly maybe 20% but not 300% or around there maybe 270% so there is a potentially increased risk of thyroid cancer the more iodine that you take especially if you were replete before number two is another risk is the development of autoimmune thyroiditis and so if you autoimmune thyroiditis is an autoimmune of your thyroid in which your body your immune system creates antibodies which attack and destroy your thyroid gland uh, we commonly refer to this as Hashimoto's thyroiditis but there are other immune thy thyroiditis as well and so what what uh, the reason for this concern is that researchers this study comes from Poland they looked at people they looked at the the civilization of Poland over a seven-year period through biopsies and what they were doing is they were actually taking biopsies of thyroid glands and they found that when they repleted iodine like iodizing salt and things like that they found that the risk of basically just the incidence of Hashimoto's or, or autoimmune thyroiditis in this case went up from 1.5 percent to 5.7 percent over a seven-year period so that's a pretty pretty significant increase in percentage again it's not just a slight bit it's, it's a lot now again you can't say that 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 using iodine causes Hashimoto's thyroiditis but there seems to be a trend over that same period of time now it also could be that you know personally I think that something at play is probably has to do with the fact of using iodine without other supplements such as um, selenium and so on but it is interesting that that taking iodine was associated with an increased risk in addition you'll also see if you look around my blog comments and you look around YouTube uh, my comments on some of my videos you'll 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 also see anecdotal evidence of people who have experienced the same thing now again it doesn't mean that even if you took it that it would cause Hashimoto's in, in your body or it would cause autoimmune thyroiditis however it's absolutely worth considering okay so that's number two number three is fetal hypothyroidism and so what I mean by that is using iodine especially if you're pregnant has a risk of causing hyperthyroidism in the fetus or in the baby um, in utero obviously before the baby is born the reason for this has to do with the fact that the fetal thyroid doesn't have the same protective mechanisms that the mother has and so it's more sensitive to iodine than the mother is and so what will happen is when you when you look at mothers who have used iodine supplementation um, there the TSH in the blood cord or the cord blood happens to be um, happens to be higher than it is um, in the mother and so that that's why they think there might be a problem there but at the same time we know that pregnant and lactating women have a higher demand for uh, iodine and that has to do with the fact that they have to supply it for the baby so it's not to say that if you're pregnant or lactating you shouldn't use iodine but you should be um, 
you should con you should consider the fact that using excessively high doses may actually be harmful. So that's number three. So it can actually cause hypothyroidism. And then number four, it can cause iodine-induced hyperthyroidism. And so there's a list of, of at least four different populations of people who are really sensitive to developing hyperthyroidism once they consume or if they consume large doses of iodine. And so if you understand how iodine works in the body, it's not surprising. Um, so what happens is iodine is used to create thyroid horm hormone. So your body stores iodine in the thyroid gland, and then it uses that iodine to produce T4 and T3, which are your thyroid hormones. So if you take a large amount of iodine, your thyroid gland may take it up and then, you know, suddenly it's like just producing a lot of substrate or you, you've acquired a lot of substrate. So then your thyroid can say, oh, great, this is awesome. I'm just going to produce a ton of thyroid hormone. And that can flush the system with thyroid hormone and that can cause hyperthyroidism. So it does, again, this doesn't happen in every single every single person who use iodine. However, there are some subgroups or populations of people who are more sensitive to this than others. And so we'll talk about those. Number one is People who are in iodine sufficient areas, so like the United States where we put iodine in things, who suddenly take excessive doses of iodine, more than they need. And so you can think about this as people who um, have no thyroid problem, who are just like, oh, I think taking iodine will be a good idea. That is the wrong group of people to take iodine because they are much more likely to develop hyperthyroidism as a result. Number two would be people who have previously had uh, an episode of postpartum thyroiditis. So if you are a woman and you developed autoimmune thyroiditis or postpartum thyroiditis after your baby, it would be it would not be a good idea to suddenly take a high dose of iodine because that can trigger hyperthyroidism. The third group would be people who have um, normal thyroid function but have a thyroid go goiter. So a goiter is just an enlargement of the thyroid gland. It can be from a lot of things, but one of the things is iodine deficiency. So if you have a goiter, um, and but your thyroid function is normal, so your body's just compensating by growing the thyroid, but there's no problems with the actual amount that you can produce. Taking high doses can suddenly flush the system with high doses of um, thyroid hormone. And then the fourth group would be people who have Graves' disease who are taking antithyroid drugs. So methimazole um, or PTU would be those type of drugs. Remember, those drugs block thyroid function, the production, and they also block the conversion, T4 to T3 conversion. And so if you have Graves' and you're taking antithyroid drugs, taking high doses of iodine can make they can make the medication less effective but they can also sort of overrun it and then cause a, a flush of uh, thyroid hormone being produced in your body and therefore cause hyperthyroidism so at least those are four groups of people that should be very cautious about using iodine so let's talk about a little bit about enough so when I, I keep saying high doses but i'm not really telling you how much is a high dose so remember a lot of studies have have come out to say that there is you know, an optimal range of iodine intake is probably probably between 100 and let's say 300 on the max of micro, micrograms of iodine per day. Okay, so that's sort of the the range of, of a healthy to high or high healthy amount of iodine that you can consume. This is just enough to prevent go goiter. So there are some people who will need less and some people who will need more. However, let's put this into context. So most supplements are in the microgram dose, but some supplements contain incredibly high doses in the milligram range dose. So remember, 1,000 micrograms is equal to one milligram. So if you're taking 12 and a half milligrams, and I've seen some people take as high as 50 milligrams, that is a massive dose. It's hundreds of times higher than what you would actually need. And so that's when you kind of get into trouble. And I think also, so I've seen some people accidentally, when we're talking about you could get, you know, six milligrams to 12 milligrams in a drop of iodine solution. What if you took 10 drops accidentally or something like that? You could flush your, your body with a significant amount in a short period of time. And that's where I think you, you can get into problems. So a safe amount is probably somewhere between 100 and 300 micrograms per day. I tend to think somewhere between 75 and 150 is sort of the safe range that I think about. Because remember, you should also be trying to consume this um, in, through other places as well. So um, humans can only get iodine through their diet. So that's why you either need to supplement or you need to consume it through foods. But I think the range is somewhere between 100 and 300. And personally, I recommend supplements between 75 and um, 150 micrograms per day. And so I put that same amount in my T3 conversion booster, um, which is a supplement that I use um, to help promote um, thyroid function and, and, and um, thyroid conversion and then thyroid hormone synthesis. So you can, I only put 75 micrograms, which you can see of iodine in there for that purpose, because I think it's a safe amount. Um, so anyway, yeah, remember that. And then 
some people have asked, well, what kind of source? Like, where, where do we get it from? Because there was concern about nuclear radiation from the leak back in 2011. But, and I see that for, as a concern from a lot of people. However, the studies that I've looked at show that the majority of that uh, nuclear waste was cleaned up naturally um, through certain strains of um, algae and so on, um, but also just it fades over time and that it reached very low levels about two years afterwards. So currently now, uh, those levels don't seem very concerning. Then the second thing I hear is that people are concerned about seaweed and kelp. They're worried about the heavy, heavy metals which are in there. But again, I've seen studies, which you can see here, which show that that's not really the case. So I think you can safely consume these things, um, seaweed and kelp, and you can get iodine that way. But you can supplement as well, provided it's not incredibly high. So the bottom line is, I think, if you have thyroid disease, you should be very cautious about using iodine, especially excessively high doses, as defined as greater than 300 micrograms per day. I think it's much safer to start out lower, and if you feel that you need more, you may need to you may need to use more, um, especially if you feel like your storage form is is reduced. But using excessively high doses for a high period of time, I'm talking in the milligram range, um, I just don't see any clinical utility or benefit to that. I've used it personally on myself. Um, I've used as high as 12.5 or even 25 milligrams per day on myself and on my wife. who I, I don't have thyroid problems, but my wife does. I've used it on her as well. Um, while it didn't cause any benefit, I just think that the potential harm associated or the risk involved is probably not worth that high dosages. And so it may help some people, but I think, again, you have to really look at the risk and see where you fit into that spectrum. So that's that's sort of a... Um, and this is all this is based on several studies and, and so on that you can look at this blog post and go through um, if you'd like and read those studies if, if you want more information. But that's sort of where I stand on on the topic of iodine supplementation and whether or not it's safe. So if you have questions, leave them below. I want to know if you've used high doses of iodine before and how you reacted to it um, and whether or not you're considering using iodine right now. Leave your comments below and I'll, I'll do my best to answer those within um, a day or, or two at the most. So anyway, I look forward to hear from you guys and otherwise I will see you guys in the next one.